Prince William's World Cup fail exposes bigger problem. Greetings from Royal Family Lud, my channel. The monarchy is once again under scrutiny following the Prince of Wales' choice to miss the last World Cup game in Sydney. Oh, Prince William, you absolute moron. You've really screwed up, my son. It was a dud, really big. I truly hope that whatever the prince did over the last weekend, whether it was organizing his collection of novelty socks or walking around Balmoral in his crocs, was worthwhile because it is obvious that it was more important to him than, say, maintaining the Commonwealth. The World Cup may be finished and the heartbreaking end of the Matilda's journey, but the real losers in this situation are not the English squad. Come forward, House of Windsor. Since it became clear that William, the president of the Football Association, would not be enduring 22 hours of the finest first-class treatment from British Airways in the name of doing his job and showing up to do his duty, there has been no end to the righteous anger directed at the royal family in recent days. Unsurprisingly, the pathetic sop of a social media video from Kensington Palace, which showed Prince William and Princess Charlotte cradling a soccer ball, failed to appease us Scrooge-like types over in the erstwhile colonies. Thank you. Please subscribe to my channel. But if anyone on the team led by Prince William and his wife Kate, the Princess of Wales, had hope that this disaster would soon be forgotten now that the cup had been won, fasten your seatbelts, little ones. Since this circumstance has actually brought to light a far more serious issue, King Charles, William, and Kate have yet to travel to any of the 14 nations outside of the UK where His Majesty is the head of state. William and Kate managed to travel to Boston late last year for his Earthshot Prize, while Charles and his wife Queen Camilla made a state visit to Germany and will visit France later in the year. Prior to the Wallace's arrival in Singapore, when Earthshot holds a week of events in November, the Prince will fly to New York for the Earthshot Innovation Summit next month. The King is reportedly about to conduct the Royal Summit, with William and Kate during which he would allegedly tell the Prince and Princess of Wales of his intention to carve out precise roles for them, as well as himself and Queen Camilla. This was reported in the Mirror over the weekend. He will place a high priority on using William and Kate's star quality to bring the Commonwealth together. While William disinterestedly stares out the window and muses about the great yawning topic of lunch, I see Kate meticulously taking notes in immaculate handwriting in her Smithson notebook. According to a Charles-related source, His Majesty is extremely clear. His rule must be centered on the Commonwealth. He views it as his ultimate responsibility to carry out his late mother's honest request that one of his main responsibilities be to maintain the organization's resilience in addition to its survival. This separation is so mind-numbingly stupefying that I need to gently wash my forehead with cool water. On the one hand, we have some of those dependable insiders and sources who appear in the British press to gush about how much the king and his associates care about the Commonwealth. But when the going gets tough, it appears that William in particular can't be bothered, can't be arsed, that is, to express his support for women's sports or for two of the 14 nations he will one day lead. Will William truly take action in the future to preserve one of his grandmother's greatest legacies? The Commonwealth is the key question at hand. Other examples include her honing her resting regal door face and donning championship-level brooches, or is his primary motivation to pursue his own, albeit vain, projects, the ones that would inevitably win him Gen Z TikTok fans than anything else. After last year's Caribbean debacle, where they appeared embarrassingly out of their depth when confronted with problems like the UK's colonial past and slavery reparations, it's true that the Wallaces would be a little wary about another Commonwealth tour. The prince and princess, however, have on-call press secretaries, aides, and advisors. These people ought to have spent the previous 18 months figuring out how to conduct future overseas tours without them turning into a suntanned mess and their protagonists appearing like extras in a white mischief TV adaptation. The king and queen should also be criticized in this situation. Given that Camilla despises traveling and that his majesty is, in fact, getting close to 75 years old, a journey to Australia may not be in their best interests. However, all jobs have less pleasurable aspects that one must obediently endure and carry on with. Without moments like those, what's the use of all that stiff upper lipping? Carbon emissions are only one of the reasons Charles, Camilla, William, and Kate haven't visited Australia yet. Protocol. The costs. 
considering that they have been flying frequently, albeit abroad, just don't add up. Also, why have countries lower in the pecking order, along with many others, joined the Commonwealth while the top-tier nations have yet to do so? I give you Princess Anne, who has always been a shining example, who has traveled to Uganda, the US, Cyprus, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia in the past 12 months, she even found time to visit the police stables for part of the day. While the Duchess of Edinburgh and her husband Sophie have gone to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and the Cayman Islands, her brother Prince Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh and titled Afterthought, has traveled to Canada. The Duchess, the most underappreciated member of Crown Incorporated, has also traveled to Iraq where she spent four days as part of her efforts to aid those who have been sexually assaulted in hostile environments. It's hardly surprising that she visited the U.S. late last year, where she attended a number of royal events, while also receiving a highly coveted prize from Georgetown University's Institute for Women, Peace, and Security in Washington. Why couldn't William and Kate travel to numerous countries, including Commonwealth states, if Anne, Edward, and Suffy may do so and do their part to uphold the monarchy and fly the British flag? All that is required of them is that they take a seat in first class and think of Britain. The Prince and Princess of Wales' concern today, following the World Cup, is that it will appear somewhat superficial when they finally turn up in Australia and perform their cleached razzle-dazzle double act. When it suits them, or if there is something in it to support brand whales, it will appear as though they are thrilled to come here and participate in several corny picture opportunities. Such a journey will not in any way bind the Commonwealth together. The Express published a famous front page in 1997, a few days after Diana, Princess of Wales, passed away, pleading with the late Queen to show us you care. Actually, this weekend, women all throughout the world, including those from Australia, ask William that question. Show us that you are considering us. Show us that you have even a passing understanding of what is happening. Charles and William must demonstrate their concern for and awareness of local issues if they want to rule Australia. We've recently had a watershed moment as a country with the World Cup and the Matilda's amazing run. I believe Advance Australia best describes their attitude.